Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I guess Seth doesn't like what he's watching. So I'll be right back. I just got here. Hang on one second. Okay, so sorry. My husband is, uh, he has a stomach bug. So, I am parenting um, while he's sick. So anyway, I want to talk to you tonight about uh, prodigal children. Uh, prodigal sons and daughters, people that have strayed away from God, that God wants them to come back into a good relationship with Him. And uh, we're going to read the prodigal son, and I'm going to read to you what I wrote on Facebook twice. I've, I really felt compelled about this subject, prodigal, and it's uh, something that comes up a lot during my quiet time so I just you know I never even set my music up today I guess I won't be listening to it because I don't have my thing in I might be I don't know um I think we're gonna jump right into prayer but tonight um the theme is come home and it's for prodigal children sons and daughters you know, both. We we all stray away from God from time to time. Um, Alright, I'm going to jump into prayer first. Ow. God, we just come to you and we just want to uh, praise you. Because you are the Father that will take us back again and again and again just like the song says there's not going to be a time where you'll go nope not taking you back this time because that's not who you are god you are loving and compassionate and kind and you are patient and you are forgiving god and we just thank you for that you are the great jehovah you are the great i am you have um you are from everlasting to everlasting. You are our everlasting Father. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our healer. You are our shelter in the storm, God. But God, you are also the righteous judge that will come. Well, you're not coming, but you will. You will um, rain down your righteous judgment on all unrighteousness, God. So we need to be ready. We need to keep our relationship with you. Um, we need to repent of our sins so that we can be reconciled and restored to you in our relationship. God, we just, um, we just want to lift up the sick to you, God. There are just so many so many people that are sick, God, we just pray that you would heal their bodies. There are so many people that are emotionally sick, God, we pray for healing for that too. And we pray for spiritual healing too, God. People that um, just need an extra touch from you. God, we also pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and open their ears to the truth God that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them 
to Jesus so they could be saved. And we do pray for the prodigal children, the sons and daughters, your sons and daughters that have strayed away, God. You are right, you are where they left. You are right where they left you. And all they need to do is repent and return back to you. God, we are just so thankful that you are a loving and forgiving Father. God, we pray for all the disasters that are going on in our country and all over the world. God, we just pray that you would be with these people, that they would experience the hands and feet of Jesus through others. We lift up all the families, God, that have lost loved ones. I even saw another one on Facebook today, God. I just lift up the Hobson family to you. And just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. And all the other families that have lost loved ones too, God, I pray for peace, comfort, and strength. And for these to um, feel your presence with them, that they are not alone, God. And God, we just pray that you would help, help me to um, share what you want me to share. Remove me and help the... Um, have the Holy Spirit take over. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Ow. Alright, so I have my Run to the Father t-shirt on. Uh, the Cody Karn song, Run to the Father. I really like that song. So I shared that song, I think it was day before yesterday. It wasn't yesterday. Yesterday was Sunday. I shared it day before yesterday and yeah I'm still recording I've had so much trouble with this extra camera that I'm trying to use okay so it was the 27th it was Saturday okay so this is what I said about this song I love the song and message by Cody Carnes these lyrics are perfectly paired with the prodigal son story in the Bible in Luke 15 and we're going to read that in a minute. I am going to be speaking about that tonight but I actually did not on Saturday and did not speak so I'm speaking about it tonight. Um, I have been thinking about the prodigal sons and daughters that God is trying to draw back to him. He is waiting for them to remember the former relationship that they had with him. He is calling them into repentance of the sin that causes separation in their relationship. He is where they left him to chase after the things of the world. He so wants them to return to him. Is that you today? This was me in my past. Jesus left the 99 to come and get me to restore my relationship with God. If this is you today, do not wait. Repent, return, and be reconciled fully to God. God knows our hearts and minds, even our deepest secrets. Nothing is hidden from Him. He loves you. He will forgive you. He has a perfect plan and purpose for you personally a unique plan just for you remember repent return be reconciled and restored to God if you are not saved today call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin time is short the time is now to turn back to the one true God God wants none to perish John 3 16 through 21 call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today admit that you are a sinner ask for forgiveness believe that Jesus is God's one and only son that came to save the world through his death burial and resurrection confess Jesus is your Savior and Lord of your life invite him into your heart leave the old receive the new and I'm gonna skip the hashtags well then we skipped a day and um, oh, I'm going the wrong way so this is what I shared today with this other song by David Crowder called uh, lift your head weary sinner I like that song too I love this song and message by David Crowder I have been thinking about prodigal children 
I once was one stumbling through life thinking that I was saved, which I was not. I knew who Jesus was in my head and because I was blessed to be a child in a Christian home where our mother's love, light, and service of Jesus was demonstrated to us. My mother was such a servant of Jesus. I can't even compare. I can't even compare to the things that she would do for other people. She, she loves Jesus. She's with him now. I had the head knowledge, but not the heart knowledge. I didn't know in my heart that Jesus saved me like I know now in my heart. I was the one that Jesus left the 99 to find. Um, oh, I went too far up or too far down or whatever. Um, I was the, I was the weary sinner when I was found. Are you that weary sinner today? God is waiting for you to remember. God is waiting for you to repent. God wants to reconcile, reconcile and restore the relationship as it was. Please don't keep waiting. Be reconciled today. If you are not saved, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. And I'm going to leave it at that because it's exactly the same thing. So, I have two cameras going tonight, and so far the other one is still recording. It wouldn't do that the other night. It kept quitting. And um, the one that I have at the bottom is a city scene. So, I guess I kind of wanted to go to the city tonight. I um, haven't been to the, to the city much with the COVID and everything. So, trying to protect my son. Um, trying to pre protect our son so um, I did go and do some errands today okay so if you can think of any verses that um, go with this story that are not this story well, there might be a parallel story in here I'm not sure in one of the Gospels but I know that this story is in Luke so I'm going to read it out of Luke in Luke 15 verse 11 and this is Jesus telling this story and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them his living and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with righteous, riotous, riotous living, not righteous, riotous, riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, remembered, when he remembered, we remember, remember that relationship. He is remembering his relationship with God. Well, he is remembering his relationship with his Father. But God is, represents the Father in here. But he is remembering his relationship to his father when he came to himself. He said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. So he's going to go to his father and he's going to repent. He's going to repent for his sins. So we remember, we repent. He's returning. 
So he's, he's returning. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He was willing to just be a servant, to have a full belly, because he was in want, because he spent everything he had. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to be merry so he remembered his relationship with his father he repented of his sins he returned to his relationship with his father. His father reconciled the relationship and his father restored the relationship. So those are the five R's. The five R's of running to the father. R's. <laughs> Sounds like a, a pirate. Five R's of running to the father. But I titled this Come Home. Because I just wanted it to be simple. Okay. Um, now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house. He heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants. And asked what these things meant. And he said unto him. Thy brother is come. And thy father hath killed the fatted calf. Because he hath received him safe and sound. So the father thought the son was dead. The son was lost. A lot of people get lost. A lot of people walk away from God too. And they have to return. They have to remember the relationship, repent, return to the relationship. And God will reconcile and restore the relationship. But his brother's mad. There's no M in this story. Um, and he was angry and would not go in. He would not go in. And therefore came, came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And this is what the father said to him. And he said unto him, Son, thou art with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. I will, this is one of my favorite stories because the Father is God. The Father is God. The Son that left is the prodigal child that leaves that walks away from God says hey I want to do it my way I got this thing called life I can do it my way I don't need your instruction booklet anymore oops I'm losing stuff out of mine I don't need you to tell me what to do 
I got it. I'm an adult. I'm out of here. Um, many of us parents that have been through the teenage through adult years, we totally get that. Um, the other son was kind of like the 99 sheep. He'd always been there. He'd always done what's right. He, you know, there was no need to celebrate with him because he, everything that the father owned was his anyway. But this one that got lost, that the father thought was dead, there is much rejoicing when a sinner returns back to God. There is much rejoicing. There is much rejoicing when a sinner gets saved for the first time because they're not lost anymore. So I really like that story. I hope that you like that story. If you are like this son, if you have walked away from God, then remember that relationship that you once had with God. Remember that close relationship where you got up every morning and you read God's Word and you prayed to Him and you turned on the radio and you listened to Christian music or gospel music that praised and worshipped God, Jesus, or the Holy Spirit or all three all in one song because sometimes music is like that. So remember and then repent repent of the sin that separates you from God repent of the sin that pulled you away from God repent turn away that means turn away it means ask for forgiveness and turn away turn away from it um, return return to God return to him return to the relationship let him reconcile the relationship and restore it. That is his job. Our job is to do the remember. Remember that relationship. Repent of your sins. Return. Return to God. He reconciles and he restores. And you know what? He makes the relationship as it never had a problem. Because when He forgives us, He forgets about our sin. He doesn't throw it up in our face every day. And that's our accuser, the enemy, that throws our sins up in our face. Once God forgives us, He removes it as far as the east is from the west. And how far is that? That is just like extremely far. I don't know how far that is but it's like he restores the relationship he reconciles the relationship so if you have been not walking with Jesus if you have been on your own path or on the wide path just not spending time in God's word not spending time in prayer um, living a sinful life it's okay he loves you he knows he knows every sin in our lives we cannot hide anything from God he knows he knows our hearts he knows our minds he knows all of it so we can't hide anything from him so it's the best just to ask for forgiveness and to turn away from that turn back to God ask him to give us strength so that we are not um, we're not tempted of that anymore but anyway I hope that um, I hope this lesson and what I read about the prodigal son I hope that it resonates with someone I don't know I felt very compelled to do this I actually tried to do this last night, but I could not get my camera to open. I could get my phone to work, but I'm, I'm wanting to 
do this on YouTube also. So I couldn't, I was working with my computer. I couldn't get it. It's working good tonight. I don't know. Maybe it was meant to do tonight. You know, God's timing is perfect and it doesn't always line up with ours. So we have to remember that too. His timing is always perfect. So today I thought it was really fitting. <clears throat> My daily verse when I did my quiet time was Matthew 05:14. Well, I got saved on 05:14 of 91. May the 14th of 91 is my salvation day. And um, I got baptized in June. I think maybe a couple of weeks later. I think June 8th, really. I think that's the date, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I thought that was, you know, you might say bizarre or a coincidence, but it's God. It's God. It's always God in His perfect timing. It's always God. I could have had the scripture any other day, but this is when I came back to the Father, is on this date. When I got saved, I came back to the Father. I had strayed away and really thought I was saved, but I wasn't. I got saved on May the 14th of 1991 and it made a huge difference in my life because I can't even tell you the date that I, when I was 16 that I said oh yeah I want to be saved and I got baptized immediately I don't even know what that date is because it didn't even mean anything to me it didn't change my heart it didn't change anything I just felt like I was at a revival at my church and I felt like, hey, it is my turn to get saved. <laughs> They're all looking at me like you're old enough to get saved. It is time to get saved. Don't let people force you into salvation. This has to be your decision. It has to be your decision. You have to be ready. You have to be ready. We all have a date. We all have a date where God has decided that we will get saved. Don't let anybody force you into it. Because I was living dangerously. I thought I was saved and I wasn't. I knew. I knew about Jesus. I knew all the stories because I'd heard them all my life. But I didn't know in here. I knew here. I knew here, but not here. And that's very dangerous. That's like 18 inches. That's, um, a lot of people are going to miss heaven by 18 inches. I don't know if you've ever heard that or not. But a lot of people think that they're saved, but they're not saved in their heart. And it's a huge difference. A huge difference. So, that is God's perfect timing that He wanted me to share this with somebody. I don't know. It, if, if last night would have been His perfect timing then everything would have worked out. But everything has fallen into place today. Has it been hard to get in here today? Yeah, because it's been kind of crazy. Because uh, Ricky has a stomach virus, so... And the good news is I could just go and do what I needed to do today, and I didn't have to take Seth with me. But... Um, I just hate for people to be sick. And we don't want it. <laughs> We don't, we don't want it. And so it's like, I feel like it's germophobia COVID time again where I'm trying to keep Seth from touching things that Ricky's touched. And it's crazy. But we'll probably all end up with it because we usually do. All right. Well, I'm going to read uh, what my Bible study was about this morning with God. Um, hey Josie, I see that you're here. Hey Josie, how are you doing my friend? My friend Josie, she is uh, faithful. She's my faithful, my faithful one that comes to pray and learn. Okay, so good morning God, good morning child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings child. New opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new day, child, to get things done and to work on your ministry today, to teach your son and work on 
moving forward with him. I will help him speak. That nearly brought me to tears when he said, I will help him speak. I will protect you and your family and all of my children from all that is going to come. And I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, for a new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus, a new day to get things done also and teach my son. Thank you for his good testing. Help me to expand his education. Thank you for this ministry. Please help me to expand it. Help me with my computer also. I can't afford a new one. And I can't. I need this one to work. And I need to take this one that I have been using for the church. I need to take it back to the church and use it for music for youth. Um, so I need my computer to work. And it's a pretty good computer. It's just really slow. Um, thank you for all of my blessings, God. And he said, child, many things will come to pass quickly, like dominoes falling. So keep listening only to my messengers. Your spirit knows who is telling truth and who is not. He gives you discernment when you stop to listen to him. Many are soon to be shocked at all the truth that will be revealed. You already know a lot of it, but not all. Even you will be shocked, child. The level of evil has been enabled to grow a lot over the last few years. The evil ones, of course, will fail, but will die trying to be right. Soon many prominent people will be in prison and on trial in front of the people all over the world. This is a worldwide evil organization that includes many. There will be no liberty or freedom with them in charge. Be the light of truth, child. The truth has set you free. I, and I said, I see all of this, God, in your word, through your messengers, and also in front of my eyes. We are all very divided, not just our country, but all over the world. People, I believe the majority, do not want global government control. We just want to live our lives in freedom, following your teachings. I see the other side in comparison as a minimal amount. Um, how can they can have? How can they take control? We have to rise up and say no, just like our ancestors did. Thank you for meeting with me today, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to me in all I ask. The reunion child is so soon, but many prodigals must return, and many must be saved through Jesus. Be ready every day, child, to go with Jesus. The reunion will be so beautiful. I can't wait to see all of you here again with me. Many wait in anticipation. And I said, Maranatha, God. Oh, you just got to the post office? So how was work? Was work good? I think I want to do the E band tonight. The band go. I got this. Where's the band? Oh. The band is hiding. There we are. I really like the E band. Okay, so this is the E band. Gotten to where I like to share the gospel with it. I'm going to look for some other ways. Or I might just write some other ways. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I like my other camera. I'm in a city. I'm in a city and I'm on a screen above the Cyber Cafe. And there's all these taxis in the street. People skateboarding, riding um, motorbikes. 
riding a motorcycle. It's kind of funny. But, oh well. I don't have anything that fun on Facebook. I looked at some of their effects and I wasn't real impressed. Um, they were kind of silly. Okay. Well, let's get back into sharing the gospel. Okay, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because... Oh, you were sleepy all day? I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1, 16. Oh, my day was good. Um, I didn't get up till 10, so I kind of had a late day. Okay. So let's get to the colors here, which is kind of hard to do with two cameras. Okay, let's see. Maybe this will work better. Oh, no. You can't even... Okay. I'm going to have to do it like that. Oops. That's in front of my face. See, it's like backwards. And then you can't see it on that one. Well, this is crazy. This might not work. Because <laughs> the camera's flipped around on the other one. Okay, maybe I can do it like that. Okay. Alright. There we go. I don't need to see my face. I don't care. Alright, this is salvation. It's more important. I gotta make sure I get it turned right, too. Okay, so the gold. The gold represents God, the creator of all, who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you, and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. Okay, so that's the gold. Then we've got... Wait. This is so crazy. Okay, then we've got the question mark. We've got the question mark. The dark color represents sin. Sin which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty of our sin is death or separation from God forever. Okay. The first question mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? Okay. The red color. The red color. Okay, the red color. Um, the red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. We don't have to be. And so then we go to... Oops. I'm trying to get this closer for this one. It's really hard to do this. Okay, who needs a nose? I don't need a nose. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. Okay. All right, we're back on, we're still on the question mark. Okay. Um, this question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' 
gift of forgiveness by believing in Him. And if you have not, then let's pray. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oops. Okay. So then we have the green. The green. The green. Okay. So the green stands for... The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. Okay, so you have a heart. You have a heart emblem. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. And so the next one is the Bible. The Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and His love. The next one is the little praying guy. The little praying guy. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts and needs and desires with Him. And the next one is um, baptism. Baptism. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And the next one is the little handshake, the fellowship. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. That's the best place to start, I think. Okay. So the next one is the world and the cross. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. So we're going to share, we're going to share the good news. Okay, and that is the E-band. Well, E-band, WWW E-bands. Okay. All right, so that is, um, if you did pray, pray that prayer, no, I can't, I don't know how to fold this up anymore. Okay, if you did pray that prayer, then the angels in heaven are rejoicing, and, um, and you have been, you have now been saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his son. And um, like it says, read your Bible every day, pray to God, um, and praise. Praise also. Praise is very important. And welcome to the kingdom family of God. Okay, well I think I came to do everything that I was supposed to do. I shared with you about the prodigal son. There are prodigal daughters also. So if you are a prodigal son or a daughter, then uh, run to the father. 
run to the Father and uh, have your relationship reconciled. Okay, well let's do in Numbers, let's do the blessing from God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. So God wants to give us peace. God loves us. He wants the very best for us. And when we are separated from Him and we don't have that close relationship with Him, we are the ones that miss out on the blessings. So we need to choose. I woke up thinking about choices. I'm probably going to do choices tomorrow. So we need to choose to keep that relationship close. And the way you do that is having your personal quiet time every day and following what you learn in God's Word, uh, following the example that Jesus gave us also. All right, well, it is time to pray. I haven't been on here for very long, but I didn't have a lot of scriptures either. I just read the story of the prodigal son. So I guess that's good. All right, well, let's pray. Do you know of anything that we need to pray for, Josie? Oh, Austin. Austin's. Austin fell and hurt himself. I found out my, my old boss lost a son today in a car wreck. It just seems like there's so, so much death, so much sickness. It's really, it's kind of a sad time. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and pray. And I remembered that. I am not sitting up very well. Oh. Oh. Okay. God, we just come to you, and we are so thankful, God, that again, again, you will. We can run to you again and again and again. God, that your grace and your mercy never fails. That every day we get new mercies and blessings, God. Every day you are faithful. You are loving. You are kind. You are patient, God. And keep all your promises, God. You are the promise keeper. You are the miracle worker. You are the way maker. You are the light in the darkness. God, we just thank you. And we just pray. We pray that if there is anybody that comes and watches this, God, and that they have strayed away from a relationship with you, that they will run to you, God. That they will return to you. They will repent. They will remember that you will reconcile and restore their relationship, God. As as it as it is. God, we just thank you. We just lift up all the sick people to you. I lift up Austin to you, God. Pray for healing for his problem that he has, God. And um, I pray for Josie that you will keep her well and that you will she will get good rest. And I pray for Mike and all the boys that he takes care of, God. What a blessing for a godly man to pour into these young men. God, we do have to. My, my uh, verse today was, train up a child in the way that he will go and he will return to it. You know, that kind of goes with this lesson. That father had trained his son to where when he knew things were wrong, he knew where things were better. And so, God, that is what we have to do. We have to train our children. We have to teach them about you and about your loving kindness. 
And so, God, just help us. Help us to be more in your presence this year. Help us to testify of your goodness. And help us to encourage others. God, we pray for peace and unity and love in our country, God. We pray to be the United States under America, under God, too. The United States under God and the United States of America. We are not united, God. Jesus is the only one that can unite us with the love and compassion and the tolerance that only He shows. God, we just pray for that. I pray for um, the Hobson family, God. I pray that you would be with them, that they would feel your, your presence, and that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength in all the people that have lost loved ones, God. The very same for them. It's a, it's a sad and happy occasion. Sad for the families and the friends, but happy if, if, if they are yours, God. They'll never be sick. They'll never have a want for anything. God, so it's happy for them, but very sad for us. So please be with us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, been hanging out in the city for nearly 50 minutes. So I'm going to go hang out in my kitchen and fix our son something to eat because he's trying not to spread his germs so I hear I hear Seth in there telling him that he's hungry or motioning that he's hungry I have to make him repeat words to tell me that he's hungry but hey it's something it's more than what we had two or three years ago so um, you all have an awesome rest of your evening an awesome tomorrow and so much love and hugs and good night